Good morning, everybody. My name is Clayton Bagwell. I'm with the um, user engagement group and accounts and allocation support. And if you don't have an account, what are you doing here? <laughs> okay, so there are two types of accounts that we have at NERSC. There's, the, um, there's a personal account, so that's basically your username or login name. Um, this provides your um, identity with, with NERSC and also um, uh, your authorization, what you're allowed to access. Um, and you can request an account on your own. We have a new user account request form, but like I said, if you're here, you're already a user, you probably already have an account. Um, or you can also have um, the, uh, the principal investigator or one of their proxies for a project can request an account for you. Or if you want to work with multiple projects and you already have an ERSC account, then you would also have to have the PI or their proxy add you to their project. So that comes to the second um, type of an account. That's the project allocation account. Um, and those are usually identified by what we call a repository, um, also known as a repo. And it's kind of like a bank account. This is what you pay for your computing time with, the, the hours that you use, or the storage that you use in HPSS. Um, this is usually managed by the principal investigator or one or more proxies that they might have to do that for them. Um, so all users, all MPP users, if you're gonna compute on the, on the machines, you have to belong to a repository. And like I said, if you belong to more than one project, you belong to more than one repo, but you will designate one of those as your default repo. So if you go and run a job on Corey or Edison, you don't specify what repository you want to charge to. Uh, the system will look at what is your default repo and it will charge to that one. And all of this is managed through the NERSC Information Management website, what we uh, lovingly call NIM. Uh, so it's at nim.nurse.gov. Um, you can use this to check your, um, your daily balance in your um, repositories, change your password, change your login shell, change your default repo, updating your contact information if you move around or change your phone number or something like that. Um, okay. And in NIM, uh, we've got um, drop-down menus, which will um, give you access to different um, parts of NIM, um, uh, things that you want to do, like the actions menu is where you'll find the, the change your default uh, login shell um, or default repo. You can opt into or opt out of um, MFA, or multi-factor authentication, which is something new that we just started this year. Um, and then the information will be displayed under tabs. And here we're showing you like your account usage tab, um, logins by host shows the machines that you have access to, uh, groups that you belong to, uh, grid certificates, and SSH keys. So uh, just a quick word about SSH keys. If you want to use SSH to access the computers, you can do that, but you have to place your public key into NIM. You can't place it on the machine itself. Um, so if you use SSH, um, you put your public key in, in, uh, in NIM, the system will then check to see if you um, have a public key there and uses that to authenticate <coughs> with. Uh, here's an example of a person with belonging to multiple repositories. The information that we show you is your hours used and hours charged. So different machines have different charge factors, different queues have different charge factors, uh, QoS, uh, quality of service? No. Yeah, quality of service can have different charge factors. Um, <coughs> and then um, we apply those different charge factors and that's what your charge, your actually charged hours are, it, which in some cases can be lower than the actual hours that you used. Uh, and then the balance of time that you have left. So all users, um, when you set up your account, um, 
to get it activated, you have to agree to our appropriate use policy form. Um, if you already have your account, um, you probably already have this on file. If your account has been stale for a while and been disabled and you need to reactivate it, you probably have to submit an updated appropriate use policy form to get your account reactivated. Um, so our password policies are, you are required to change them every six months. Um, I know that's a hassle for some people. We're looking at alternatives right now. Um, do not share your passwords. Do not send your passwords via email. When you get uh, an email from us saying, oh, your password's going to expire in a week, don't change your password and then send us your new password. Because if you send us our, your new password, we will disable your account. Um, if you um, have trouble with your passwords, say you're trying to log into Cori with a password and you um, get it incorrect, say five times, um, you can, and you actually know what your password is, you can log into NIM and it will clear your login failures for you. However, if you log into NIM incorrectly five times, uh, then you have to contact us. Um, also, there's, um, uh, if you've forgotten your password, um, you can, you can um, change it through the NIM um, uh, login page. We can go back to that real quick. You'll see down here, just above the login button, there's a reset your NIM password. That'll uh, walk you through a self-service password change, so you can set a new password that way. Or if you've forgotten what your username is, we can send you what your username is. Um, okay, so password rules. Uh, has to be at least eight characters long, has to have a minimum of each of these different types of characters, an uppercase letter, lowercase letter, a digit, and a special character. So long uh, passwords are good. Short passwords that look really easy are not. Um, and this is one possible method of coming up with a password if, if you want to try something like this is you come up with a phrase that you can remember easily. You take, like, computer security is very important for NERSC users. You take the first character of each of those words, and then you kind of munge the, the characters to, to fit the uh, uh, required characters that are for a password. Um, and as I said earlier, we now have multi-factor authentication. This is an additional layer of security for accessing NERSC. Uh, currently, um, you can allow to opt in and then opt out if you have problems. Um, at some point, we will go to uh, mandatory MFA, but uh, we haven't set a date for that yet. Um, you'll go through NIM to uh, set up your um, tokens, and then here's a, a link to the instructions on how to uh, set this all up. Yes? If we are using the SSH key, do we need the MFA? Currently, no, you don't. And if you do use SSH keys and you do opt in to MFA, MFA will override your SSH keys. So if you start using MFA, um, the SSH keys won't do you any good, <laughs> basically. Um, OK, um, so back to the allocations process. Um, so. Uh, every project who wants to use nurse resources um, will have a principal investigator who will ex uh, uh, submit uh, an RCAP request. That's the Energy Research Computing Allocations Process. Um, it used to be in NIM, but it's just recently moved over to our nurse help desk, and it's accessed through ercap.nurse.gov. Um, every year, um, each project that wants to continue for the next year has to submit a, new, a renewal request. Uh, that's usually done in um, late summer, usually around August. Um, you'll need to supply things like your science objectives, your approach, resources requested, um, so like computer time and archival storage time. Um, all of the requests are reviewed by uh, the DOE Office of Science uh, program managers. And then uh, we award the allocations for the approved um, projects, um, usually in December. Um, and then the new allocation year starts in January. 
Um, small exploratory allocations um, can be submitted throughout the year, um, but they will still go through DOE for approval. Um, and it's done through the same process. <coughs> so this year we have approximately 9.2 billion MPP hours across the various machines. 80% of that time <coughs> goes to uh, DOE um, for all their projects. And you may recall from uh, Rebecca's slide how that was distributed amongst the offices. 10% uh, of that time goes to the Oscar Leadership Challenge projects, the ALCC. Um, they have a different um, allocation year. Their allocation year starts in July and, and then runs through to the end of June of the next year. And they have a different um, re request process. Uh, and there's a link to that on our web pages. And then we have our Director's Reserve, um, which is mainly our like uh, NESAP, the Exascale Science Application Program, and uh, some various other special projects. So time is distributed in a couple ways. So for individuals, um, your principal investigator will determine how much time um, that they've been allocated uh, that you can use. And it's either done as a percentage of the total allocation or a fixed number of hours. So you could be allocated 100,000 hours as a fixed block or 10% of a total allocation, um, depending upon how your PI wants to, to manage the time. Um, if you run out and you're using, um, or you've been allocated a set number of hours or a percentage, um, then you'll need to contact your PI to request additional time. Um, you can still submit jobs. They will go into our scavenger queue but they, of course, the scavenger queue is at a lower priority and it may sit there for a while until a slot opens up for you. Now, at the repository level, if the entire repository has run out of time, then the PI will need to contact uh, the DOE, uh, Office of Science Allocation Managers, um, to request additional time. And they usually um, keep what they call a reserve of time. Um, they'll dole out so much of it and then keep some back for new projects that come out through the year or projects that use a lot of time. Uh, and again, uh, any jobs uh, that are submitted while the repo is technically out of time will go into the scavenger queue, um, but it, at least you'll be able to submit something. And then we have a whole list of wonderful information that you can go to review online and get information about accounts and how we charge and getting access to MFA, et cetera. And if you have any questions about your account, such as your password and if you're locked out or if it's some type of problem with it, um, you can contact um, account support. Um, that's uh, accounts at nurse.gov or um, UPI or if you are a PI and you have questions about allocations, um, you can send that to allocations at nurse.gov. Any questions? Yeah. Um, I've got one question got to allocation. Is there a convenient way of switching on the fly while you are SSHing into um, Curry? Um, not during the SSH process, but when you submit your job, you can, you can specify what repository you want your job to run against. <coughs> then there's, um, there's documentation under the, the Slurm documentation how to, on how to do that. And that's it. Okay, thank you very much.